Remember how I said oil was formed in a saltwater environment? If I look at these geologic traps, if I went a little deeper than I should have in my oil well, I'm not hitting oil anymore, I'm hitting salt water. And while these are nicely stratified, before you start drilling and before you start pumping for years, at some point you start pumping up salt water as well as oil. In fact, most of the oil wells in the Midwestern part of the United States are long since out of their primary extraction phase, and they're into their secondary extraction. In this case, you're pumping up both oil and salt water. In fact, I know from some friends, a nearby oil well to this location, they get 12 barrels of salt water for every one barrel of oil. And it's not nicely separated, it's all mixed up. Looks like dirty water. So you let it settle. You have a big tank and it sits there. And of course eventually oil floats on the water. You draw the oil off the top and sell it. And what do you do with all that salt water? You can't just put it on the fields. This is prime Illinois farmland. So you take that water and you put it back into the well. But of course it doesn't make sense to put it into the well you're trying to get the oil out of because you're just going to pump the water back up. So you do a pattern. You have one extraction well and all the wells around it become your injection wells. Those are the wells you pump the salt water back down. The well in the middle is the one you pump it and you hope that that pressure, that water going back in, helps eventually flush the oil towards one area. Maybe over the years you're pumping the same salt water up and down, but every time it gets a little bit more oil with it. Some wells are so far depleted that you don't even run them most of the year. Maybe the oil well runs one month out of the whole year because by that time enough oil has kind of eventually seeped back to that area where you can extract it. This type of extraction is called secondary extraction. You're pumping both oil and water up and then letting it separate. In some places, there's a lot of carbon dioxide trapped underground. And when you're pumping it, you don't just get oil and water, you get oil and fizzy water, carbonated water, water with a lot of CO2 in it, or oil with CO2 in it. You can trap that same CO2, you don't have to let it go, you, you build it up in a tank, and you pump the CO2 back down. And by doing that, you again add pressure to the ground underneath, again pushing more oil towards your extraction well. In the U.S., before the big oil shale, before the big shale oil, so there's a difference, tight oil boom with fracking, fully half or more of the wells in the United States were in this secondary extraction method. If you do the secondary extraction, correctly, you probably get on around another third of the oil out of the ground. So that still leaves us with a third of the oil down there, a couple miles deep. Clearly you could go drill a couple miles deep, drive a giant shaft and mine it, but that would be extremely inefficient and certainly not economically viable. You'd like to still be able to pump it out. And that's where tertiary extraction, sometimes called enhanced oil recovery, comes into play. You have rock that's got a little bit of oil left in it. You've tried pushing down carbon dioxide, you've tried pushing down water just by pumping it down there, and you've had a diminishing return. You pump back stuff, but it has oil, and it has the water, and it has the gas perhaps in it, but it's getting slim pickings. What do you do? Well, of course, most of the time you do nothing at all because the price of oil is too low, probably as it is today. But when the oil price goes higher, you can make the economic argument that I can spend some energy to get the rest of the oil out. The most common way is simply by making steam. I like to think of it this way. Let's say you've got 
a piece of machinery and it's coated with oil. It's a mess, it's grease, it's dirty. How are you gonna clean it? Well, some type of water blaster, steam cleaning, be a great way. I'll use my steam cleaning, blasting water at it. So you do the same thing with this oil that's underground in these rocks, right? We simply make steam. We have to burn energy. We have to burn some of the oil or coal or natural gas or some energy resource to make the steam. So it costs money. But then I inject steam deep into the ground and that steam will help liberate and move more oil towards the surface. Of course, that's not the only way. Again, if I go to this analogy that I've got a dirty, oily, messy thing, another thing you might simply do is add something that emulsifies the oil, a surficant. And I've got this great demo. So watch here. Here is some water and some oil sitting in a dish. And I want to get the oil to all go in one direction. And I can just add one drop of this super magic surficant ingredient. Voila, the oil all moves to one side. And what is this magic stuff? Soap or detergent. The same way you might clean oil off your hands, we can pump down soap into the strata deep below the earth and clean the oil. And do we pull up some soap with it? Sure, but there's some way we can use to extract the oil from that and still get our payday. There's another way to do this, and I've always liked this one, although I don't know how often it's really done. And you pump sugar, molasses, down into the well. You think, huh? Come on, Professor Rusick, really? Sugar? Sugar is somehow going to mix with oil? What are you going to do, make cake? No, no, wrong kind of oil. All right. You also add, with the sugar, some bacteria. This is not oil-eating bacteria. That would be a really dumb thing to do, right? Because you're trying to get the oil. No, no, no. This is anaerobic bacteria that eats the sugar and, as its waste product, makes CO2. Just like we were pumping carbon dioxide down, here we're going to create the carbon dioxide down into the porous structures itself. This, of course, makes more pressure. The pressure brings up the oil. You want the bacteria all die? Stop feeding them. Stop pumping sugar down to them, and then you're fine. So we have ways of doing tertiary oil extraction. At one point, there was maybe 10, 15 percent of the wells in the U.S. in this method. So I want to show you some interesting statistics. We've talked about how you get oil out of the ground. And it really depends on what ground you start with. If you have something that's very porous, geologic traps that are mostly sand, your wells can be very far apart because you can draw from a large reservoir. Saudi Arabia, the rest of the Ar Arabian Peninsula, is blessed with this type of oil condition. Their wells can produce enormous amounts of oil and be separated by large distances. Here are some figures of the number of wells in 1980 in the United States and how many barrels per day they got compared to Saudi Arabia. And at this point, Saudi Arabia was pumping more oil than the United States. So we look back in 1980, way before any oil shale boom, way before horizontal drilling allowed uh, fracking to be able to be done. Our, our oil during the, um, we're, we're still trying to increase uh, production, but lots of wells in secondary, maybe tertiary production. The price of oil has gone way up. At this point, there are 750,000 wells in the United States, three quarter of a million oil wells. But on average, they're making only 12 barrels per day. It's not a lot of oil per well. Contrast this to the same time period for Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, the largest oil producer in the world, 600 wells. How much are they making per day? 7,000 barrels of oil per day from 600 wells. 
7,000 barrels per day per well. America, 750,000 wells, 12 barrels per day per well. The statistics are a little different today. Oil production has gone up in both countries. And of course, it's just this year where oil production in the United States surpassed oil production in Saudi Arabia. But we still have much less efficient wells. Today, there's only about a half million active oil wells in the US. And they're making 21 barrels per day per well on average. Saudi Arabia has drilled more. Oil has even become a little harder to find there, slightly. They have a large reserve. They have more like close to 3,000 oil wells now. And instead of 7,000 barrels a day, they're only getting 4,000 barrels per day from the oil wells. The difference, the type of geologic trap, and the porosity of the rock from which you're drawing the oil. 